It's Jay Cancy, Track and Y Ranch. Hey, just want to show you some stuff today. Uh, we're out here at one of our properties. Uh, this is one of our new lease grounds that we're running on. So it's 40 acres uh, that we're going to be turning cows out in. It's some late grass. It's quite burnt up. Uh, but down in the back, uh, we still got a lot of low bottom ground. So there's a lot of green down there, a lot of canary. Uh, it's getting pretty mature, but uh, it'll green right back up to fall rains that are coming. Just want to show you today, uh, this is the Gallagher Fault Finder. This is their older model. Uh, they do have newer ones now. They have the I-Series as well, and that shuts your fences off. Um, this one has two features. So I'm going to push the little button. The first fe feature shows you KV, that's your kilovolts. So thousands of volts. And your second one is going to be your amps. That's the amount of draw that's on your fence. The higher the number, uh, it's going to normally associate that you have um, a fault somewhere that all the power is flowing there. It's kind of like a hole in your bucket. The amps tell you how big of a hole that is. So we're going to show you some things. Uh, we just just ran a temp fence around this. Uh, most of these properties, first thing we do is we run a single strand of uh, soft wire around them. If it's going to be semi-permanent, that we're going to keep it there until we work through uh, doing some long-term permanent fence fixes. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to check our fence. Um, did this when I showed up this morning, and we're going to see right here we got 1.8, 1.7 kilovolts. So one. 1,800 kilovolts. Um, for us, that's pretty low. So uh, in the same section here, we're gonna trade over to amps. So I'm gonna put that on it, show you what we're looking at. 1.6. You'll notice uh, it has a grounding tab right here. Stick your finger on it. Normally get a little bit higher reading uh, than if we are not. So we'll let it reset. And we'll touch it back. So. 1.4 now without the grounding hit. So we'll hit our amps and we got zero amps, so no draw, but we're pretty low. Our fence should be, we always try to shoot for at least three. Um, this fence has been in the fives and we're only running three grounding rods. Uh, so something's going on. So what we do, turn it on to your amp setting. So you can see a little A down on the bottom left. There's that A. And we're just going to hold it right on our fence, right there. So still reading zero amps. So something's going on. So what you do with the fault finder, it's really good on helping you find shorts. So as you can see, we got a corner here, fence goes around. And we're working our way from our termination point. So our fence doesn't make a loop, it makes a termination. So it runs from power to the end and then just terminates. It doesn't make a whole loop and that helps the fault finder. Uh, really narrow down where you got issues. So, as you can see, we're going to run around. We're going to go to this corner, and then we're going to head back across. So, let's see what's going on here. So, we're going to jump back to this corner and see if it's somewhere in between. Now, you can check as close as you want or as infrequent as you want to see if it's an issue. So, we're going to run to our next little corner here. So, we put it on, and now we got a different reading. So it says 12.4 amps, and it has an arrow, and the arrow points back to our left. So you'll notice a couple of different things. Is one, it has a one on the I-series remotes, and the other ones, it gives you different zones, so it'll help you narrow that down. So it says we got a hole. We got 12.8 amps of power they're leaking out. So something to our left. The nice thing is it gives you an arrow. So we're going to follow that arrow. Go down here to the left, and I'm going to go two insulators. And we're going to put it here, and 13, 12.8 amps. So it's still pointing to the left. It's a great joy of this tool, is it's going to point you in the direction of your fault, uh, really help you figure it out. So I'm going to bounce two more down here, put it on, and now it's reading zero. So zero amps. So it's gotta be back between between the last test and this one. So what you do is you start going down your fence line and guess what we just found? So we got an old section of woven wire fence uh, that's touching up against. So I'm just gonna make a quick little 
jury rig repair here. We're going to try to make it kind of super simple just to kind of demonstrate how this works for you guys. And then we're going to come back and cut it out. So there we go. I just put some twists so now it's not touching. Whoop. So works pretty good. So we're going to go back to that last insulator where we had zero amps and let me put it on zero amps and you can see the nine different zones so if we had a zonal fence it was going to tell us also and what are we at we're at 8.8 .8 kilovolts so 8,800 kilovolts and we're going to go back up one more time just to show you how good this thing works so right behind us and right over there is where we had our little fault that we just fixed up here we're at 8.3 so once again, that grounded tab is kind of cool. It's got a grounded tool that you can stick in the ground. We normally take ours off so we can just chuck in our pocket. But if you ground it out on yourself, you normally get a little bit higher reading because then it's going through your body. And there we are, zero amps. So we got a nice, nice hot fence right now. Once again, it's the Gallagher Fault Finder. Really good, gives you that directional arrow, makes fence fixing a little bit easier. Uh, hope you like this little tip. Anything we can do to keep those cows in, keep the grass in their bellies, and ultimately raise some great grass-fed beef.